Let's do it. Okay. Call to order the Parks and Recreation Board meeting on November 12, 2024 at 6 p.m. Um, all those who are able, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, Lori, can I please get a roll call? Okay, can everyone yell? I'm sorry, I have no hearing in my right ear and about 20% in my left ear. So I think I can see everybody's here, but um, Chair Gaynor. Here. Patty Burns. Here. Evan King. Here. Joanna Parra. Here. Sherry Simmons. Here. Don Weber. Here. Matt Lyman. Here. Your ex officio is Councilor Ricky Smith. Here. Okay, thanks. Perfect. I'm sorry, you guys. <laughs> no worries. No worries. All right. Um, are there any corrections or changes to the minutes from October 14th? No, we're good. Okay, perfect. All right, can I get a motion to approve the minutes from October 14th? So moved. Okay. I'll second it. Okay, all those in favor? Who seconded? Aye. I'm sorry. I did. We had three. Don and Evan. Evan. Okay, thank you. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry, I didn't say it loud enough. No worries. Any opposed? No? Okay, minutes are approved. Uh, Lori, did you receive any public comments prior to the meeting? Nothing prior to the meeting. Okay. Is there anyone in the audience wishing to make a public comment? No. All right, anybody on Zoom? No, all right. Well, I guess we'll start with our uh, presentation here uh, regarding, we good, still good to go? Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, regarding uh, Pacific Community Design in regards to our phase five parks plan. Please uh, come on up and the floor is yours. Hi. Whenever you're ready, go ahead. Do you guys have it on a flash drive by chance? I don't. Yeah, um, <laughs> you have, you have one hard copy. I have. We're going to summon in just a moment. It didn't get. It didn't. Um, Stick with the link on the agenda, so we're going to have to summon it from another source. Because I can resend it. That wouldn't hurt. We wouldn't say no to that. Thank you. Okay, let me find it. Did you send it to me? Or did you only send it to Dustin? Um, no, I believe I sent it. Because I pulled it up. <clears throat> oh, I sent it on uh, the 6th. You sent it when? Uh, November 6th. Text amendment presentation, is that what it is? No. Um, it should, it's um, not that one. Oh, there it is, okay. How do I get it to you? She didn't send it as an attachment, so. Okay, well, let's load it there and then I can click it here.
think I also just emailed you. Right Under the news, yeah. Thanks. So, did you just receive an email from me? Well, the thing is, this is a oh okay. yeah. This is just a okay. There, it's there now under oh, under great. that one. Just hit the news tab, the news button. News. No, the round one is on the home page. Yeah. News and announcements, oh, and then go down under there. Switch with that, and the link is. Is that's a huge thing. Okay. That's right. That fine with That's me. Are you sure it's you? Like a video. I'm not a part of the shit point. I can't get in the other shot. Yeah, it didn't come across as an, an attachment, so that's the problem. Okay. Uh, so yeah, let me yeah. Uh, plug crap into here. And... I mean if you can load Zoom on there, log into Zoom on there online, and then you can you, just, you can open your email. Or Dropbox. I mean, we never use Dropbox, so. Um, can you open the computer? Well, there's, there's a PDF there. Yeah, that's what I put a link to Can you on the parts page. So can you, you can open your PDF. Yeah, it is. It'll be there. Yeah. Can you, can you log into the studio and then I'll give a share it with Okay. I want to put something somewhere in the way I can even fucking bounce along. Right. Lori, do I want to have more duty? That's the top of the uh, 
Just Lori, do you want me to forward you the attachment? Or I should be able to have it now because she okay. you just logged into the meeting. Yeah. So you don't want to say much. You just need to share your documents first thing. Yeah. Oh, shit. Share at the bottom. There you go. Yeah. Can't hear you. I'm sorry. <laughs> so go ahead. Go ahead, and we'll advance it. Okay. We got Thank it. You. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. We're live. <laughs> Um, hello, everyone. My name is Maureen Jackson, and I'm an associate project manager with Pacific Community Design PCD. Um, tonight, I am here with Ben Holmes, who is our senior landscape architect at PCD. And we have Devin Drake, who is a project manager with Lennar. So tonight, we wanted to uh, talk to you all again about the Bryn Hill Phase 5 Park. So if we could move forward. Um, you're all familiar with Red Hill, um, just north of um, the Main Street area here. And the Bren Hill, the parks in Red Hill not only serve that community, but will offer amenities for residents of the entire city. And if you could forward it again. So here's a map of Bren Hill right now. And all the parks, except for the park in phase five, have been approved and designed. And here I've just listed the amenities that are either already built or planning on being built throughout Bren Hill. So today what we're going to be talking about is that 0.65 acre park over in the bottom left, which is the phase five park. Now the amenities in Bren Hill itself, or the park amenities um, throughout Bren Hill, the, the Bren Hill master plan and its community elements book, along with the city of North Plains Parks Master Plan sort of identified what the preferred amenities are in each park, but they didn't specify them. And with this last phase, uh, we had previously presented more of a passive park, and today we want to, what we're presenting is a more active park with hopefully what you think are some great amenities. So if you can advance, after our last meeting with you all, um, well, during the meeting, it was a discussion of having a survey, specifically surveying the residents of Bryn Hill to see what they would like. And what we thought about with our discussion last time is that um, we heard that a lot of people see people using the, the fields over at the schools and also the, the putting green is sort of to kick the ball around. And we, we've also heard about how it gets muddy and things get torn up. So we thought about putting in a futsal court in this phase five park. So we brought that to the residents of Bren Hill, the HOA sent out a survey and the residents did, they liked the idea and they were excited about it. Um, so <clears throat> if you can go forward, Bill. What we're presenting to you tonight is not only just the futsal court, which we think will, is a great amenity um, but we've also talking to the, the board here and the city staff. We're also including in the phase five park, we're proposing a skate park. 
So, which is a, it's a smaller skate park. And um, actually, Devin can talk more about that. Um, but as you can see that we have the futsal course in the upper right-hand corner, and then the skate park is in the bottom left-hand corner. There's also the, at the futsal court, there's the shelter and there'll be seating and there will be seating around the skate park as well. And if you can afford it one more. So we have some images of the skate park and um, I am not very familiar with the skate park details. So I can have Ben and Devin speak to that about the design and the size. Yeah, um, <clears throat> it's roughly 2,500 square feet size. Um, it's no taller than four feet. Um, any edges would be within fall distances, so 30 inches max. Um, so you see these stark edges on the sides. Those are minimal heights. Um, it's intended to be, you know, beginner to intermediate, something where you know kids in the neighborhood could practice on and play on and be relatively safe. Um, not a huge, not huge drops, not you know anything uh, too dangerous or. Um, uh, yeah, you know, that's it. It's a good size for a beginner skater or a good uh, skater. Um, it's only three feet high at the bowl, and I think four feet high at the half height. Um, our angle, um, and tricks in the front of the big radius, which is very, um, uh, uh, large radius for the approach angle. Um, and we intentionally did that so it's more user friendly. It's not as steep as a drop there. Uh, and draw those beginners, you know, to the ramp. So scare them away. Um, yeah. Just how did that what did the survey show on this with regular people? Uh, so we did do a survey on the skate park. Yeah. The reason we did the skate park is because we did the past by the city. Uh, the city wanted to have a skate park. The city wants a skate park. Sure. Who's the, what's that mean, Bill? Um, I think that means that the the effort to work with Lennar and Pacific Community Design on some kind of park features that were for adolescents was important in a skate park or a skate park element was identified as a strong candidate for being one of those things because we don't we don't serve adolescents with park facilities as well as we should and so these types of facilities were identified as important and that's what it is are there any other candidates besides the skate park um the futsal court there um and but there has been previous conversation about this particular amenity type and this is a smaller safer version I think of than what has been seen before and so the attempt is at having a bit of both for kids to use what are the age levels for this I mean it's they can go up to yeah, 18 eight years, years old uh, yeah. four years old I mean it's just a big ramp so it all just depended on the level um, well, I think our concern with this was the housing around it and the noise of it. Absolutely. And that was one of our biggest concerns. Yeah. We did take that into consideration. And because this park, phase five, it's not, it doesn't abut homes directly. So it is across the street. The closest homes are across the street. There would also be landscaping around the edges of the park that would help with the noise level. Yeah. yeah and it's you know, not a large skate park. It's I would, how, a long park would, library. how long would you say that is? Uh, I think it's roughly 30 feet wide and 60 feet long. Um, roughly, I mean, it's maybe a little smaller than that. It's about, about, about 2,500 square feet. So. I mean, I think, the, I think the concern that came up with some of us is this park is different. Like Jesse made here, we certainly could have put in a skate park, but 
if you didn't for some reason. This park, if my understanding is correct, is going to be taken care of by the HOA of Brindle. So I guess what I was confused by, I thought, why not let Brindle decide what they want there? I've heard almost zero energy for skate park from them. And to me, I pretend to let them have final say. I think there are, as Sherry said, there's some noise concerns. I just walked around there today. You know, it does tend to attract uh, adolescents, junior high kids. They bring their music. They just can tend to be noisy. They like to hang out, sit, play music. Uh, I, I guess my deeper issue is I would tend to defer to the people of Brindhill because there is their park. Now, so we, it's that's the parks in Brent Hill are actually designed and there's easements to allow the parks to be utilized by residents citywide and working with the city staff and over time with the, the parks for themselves. Um, they wanted, we were directed to implement different amenities throughout Brent Hill to support just all residents of the North Plains. So that's where we came up today. We had the discussion about this maybe two, three meetings ago, and I took some time to go visit the other skate parks in Hillsburg and Forest Grove, a handful of times at each, and it was overwhelmingly boys only. And it was maybe 20% skateboarders. So there was quite a few people on, on bicycles, because it was an older crowd. And we saw some boys that were on kind of a scooter with the handles. Right. Um, so, so this is effectively a skate park for young men and boys. Like there, it was so rare to see a female that was there using it. So I'm not sure that this is this works. This works to have, them, but I don't think it's. I don't, well, I don't it, have a lot of girls that that are skating. And again, this is just one of the amenities in the park. We're also proposing the futsal board, which can be converted to pickleball. It can be used for so, yeah, multiple. That's a, hard That's a hard surface, correct? correct. Yes. Okay. Is it the futsal court or the skate park? Or no, it's the there both. Sure. Okay. So if you go back one. Yes. Sure. And then who is who is going to continue on the maintenance on this on the on this particular skate park? Did you mention that that was the HOA that will continue moving forward on that, or is that the city that is taking on the? Um, it's moving forward, so that it's not something that the city will take on. So I did the same thing when we were months ago when we met. I went and I specifically reached out to the city of Hillsborough and I, and I reached out as a, as a park and I reached out also to TH. Yes, to just get the pros and the cons of skate parks. One of the biggest things that I also received feedback on talking to their management of both um, entities was one of the noise, of, but coming to that, both entities have skate parks more geared towards and highway where the skate park is more off of the highway, which that kind of balances out the noise. And I got both of those remarks from both in regards to when they were planning that. And the uh, the con that the con that I received from both and talking to, and this is not just talking to community or people at the park, this was going to their each entity's leadership. And one of the things, uh, the feedback that I received back was looking at it in a way that both both entities, the biggest thing they have they have had moving forward was, I don't know what it is with skate parks and tagging, but that's one of the biggest things that happened. And this is in both cities. So one of them is out in um, Washington, um, the, what is it, Washington County area and Beaverton area, um, Bethany area. And then the other one is in Hillsborough off of, uh, I believe it's off of Cornelius Pass. Yeah. Um, and both entities, that was the biggest con or the biggest remark that they had is looking at it. And that's why I wanted to know who is looking at it, who's going to be responsible for that future um, maintenance on it and looking at it. I live in Brent Hill, so I want to know on the perspective that if it's the HOA and as a Brent Hill resident, is that something that's going to change as a Brent Hill resident with our HOAs that we will be, you know, 
looking at that as responsibilities of that going forward, or is that was going to be the city. So that's I wanted to see if that was something that was looked at and and just share those points of views that I did months back when we were looking at this and talking about the scale. I think the futsal is a great idea, and I think that serves many age levels, and I think it serves a year round because it creates both. I'm living in Burn Hill. I live right by where the other pickle court is at, and that is in use almost. As if it's not raining, it is always in use. Right. It's that, actually yeah, hard to get heard. in the pickle court right there because yeah. it is always in use by all ages. I have teen young adults and teenagers that are always in my home, and they're always, the pickle balls are always in use. So um, I just wanted to see. And then you mentioned a survey early on. Was that the Brent Hill residents were surveyed? Or where did you get, that, where did that come in well, regards to that aspect? They did have a survey with that that was sent out. I think it's a little misleading because the assumption was what we wanted if we had to pay more. And that was, I think that's probably why you have a 50 50 split as opposed to like an 80 20 or a 90 10. Um, just throwing that <laughs> out. I don't know if you got that. Yeah, it was, did, your yeah. costs would go up if we. Yeah put that in, would you want it? And so my guess is probably why it's closer to right. a 50-50. That's not how it was worded. It was just worded, how do you feel about your initial rate cost plan? It had nothing to do with that specific part. It was actually addressed because of the state part being more expensive than what we originally had. So I was going to see, would they be opposed to paying a higher HOA fee? We didn't tell them it was because of the HOA. It was, it was in there. I mean, yeah. I don't mean to cut you off, but it was, well, yeah, yeah I was in there. I explained it to you. Is it wasn't because we were trying to see if we could do the cheapest thing. The skate park, we're, we're trying to, you know, do something for the city mm -hmm. and work with you guys. Um, it is not the cheapest option. Mm -hmm. We originally talked about doing a half pipe. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Right, but I think that's where we added to for because it, it is not the cheapest. Yeah. So I want to kind of like <laughs> dot my you know cross my t's and dot my eyes if if it is something that is substantial and and that it's not the cheapest option to escape for. So is this the best thing for the size of our city? Because this is not just for Brain Hill community; it's for everyone. So is it part something that will really oversee? And I'm looking at it as diversity, I'm not in an Indian culture, but in age, right? and the diversity of age that we have. Like, is this really, truly the best? And for that size, what is better if that size of skate park for that small portion of um, percentage of community members that it will serve versus something else that can serve on a wider range of ages or on a wider range of an overall community, mm -hmm. um, such as like the futsal is a great idea, the pickleball is a great idea, but what else? Is there a, a plan B on something else or another idea that could fit in there that you guys may have just for us to get up? <laughs> well, this is actually worth plan C or D now. Um, like I said, we started our design, it was a passive park mm -hmm. and it was, there was um, two play areas. One was a natural play area and there was a natural trail around. And then there was more uh, discussion wanting to see more amenities um, that Lennar brought more amenities to the table. And so we added more amenities to the phase four park. And then we were asked um, to reconsider and redesign this park. And we listened to the discussion last, the last meeting we had about adding the futsal court, that's what we went away with, thinking, okay, well, you, you need more court space, but not necessarily just pickleball. And then we've also had the discussions with the city staff or like, okay, well, the city would also really like the skate park. And even though we say skate park, I skate park sort of seems like a big park, like they have over on 185 in, Beaverton, but this is a this is a smaller area, and it's just a little more than a half pipe, but yeah, it's not necessarily a large skate park that'll bring people from outside of the community in. Right, and this That's is not what it's designed. This for. design was kind of a first take at it. You know, what could we fit in the space? How could we maximize it more than just a half pipe? Um, give more amenities and more interest in the community abroad and um 
you know, it's a similar size. I don't know if you guys looked at the South Hillsboro one that they put in there, um, but there it's similar size in that, and that's kind of just a pump track. It's just undulating concrete, and we want to provide something um, nicer for the community instead of um, just kind of an afterthought. And so, you know, this isn't by far the final design, but this is, you know, what we could fit in the space, in the budgets we kind of are dealing with. Um, and for your concern about the, the graffiti and stuff like that, I think having it as part of the HOA is a benefit. You know, the, the HOA is going, you know, the members in the community are going to pay attention and they're going to see these things and <clears throat> have a more active response to it than maybe a city park where maintenance budgets are low or there you know, not enough staff to get to it right away. And so, you know, if that does happen, uh, we, we are part of the design and in Billabaw, and I haven't seen any graffiti issues there. Um, you know, it's very have a lot of eyes on it, you know, and there's a lot of. Which, I mean, that I think the deeper issue, and maybe Bill, you can speak to this, but I think the majority of us all along, and certainly listening to the people of um, Brynhill, didn't think the skate park was the way we wanted to go. Mm -hmm. But it keeps coming up, not from our group, but from city. I, I think primarily Steve Miller wants one, which is okay. But I guess, Bill, are we allowed to say we don't want a skate park? <laughs> is that on the table at this meeting? Well, I thought that was not to interject in your question, but I thought that was kind of the consensus we had last meeting was that it was kind of a unanimous no. And so then part of the agreement that we had with Brennan was then for us to send out a survey, and we did. I don't know if that made its way to your guys, to your way, but. <laughs> What's all big? I mean, they're all, they're awesome, they're great, but that came at dead last. You know, it was 75, almost 80% of people chose like they wanted like a splash pad for kids and things like that, um, which is fine. You know, I mean, enough, you know, at the end of the day, we're just a recommendation board. It's not our decision. Um, it just seems perhaps something could be a better use and service that could accommodate everyone, um, especially given what people pulled that they wanted. I guess I'll stop there and you know, no, I don't want to prefer to see another covered picnic area where you have sure center area that's used quite heavily. Um, but I would guess, like as a resident of, of Brendan Hill, I, I I don't know how feasible it is, but let's be curious to see what Hill think about the skate park. Maybe have like a ranked choice of a handful of ideas. You've already done. Yeah, like I'm, I'm guessing they don't want it, but um, yeah, part of this. So part of the survey that we did initially was yes, we asked them if they thought the pickleball slash uh, football court was a benefit, was a value to their community. Uh, so yeah, it was it was more one sided. We just wanted to see what did they think, you know. For sure. Um, most of them, you know, fifty six percent thought it was good. Uh, the rest, they said they wanted to see something else. They put slash that. They put. Um, cricket ball court, you know, mm -hmm. but um, community center, community center, pool, volleyball court, um, all sorts of stuff. Um, but yeah, overall, it was a, it was a, a good feedback. Um, I would like to see the survey that you guys did recently. Yeah, we sent it to the city a few weeks back. It was supposed to get circulated to you guys for your guys' meeting that had happened within whatever your last meeting was that you had with. The city was supposed to have made their way to them before that took place. So I don't know if it did or if it got lost in the email or or what, but it was it was sent. And there was a direct question on the skate park? For this that one? No. No, we didn't pull the, the residents. We could um pull them. Because well, you didn't know that was an option at that point. Well, we had I, I, I my, the assumption I walked away with was that since we unanimously said no, then okay, then let's look at giving four or five other, I think we have five other options right. that were outside of that. And we can read it if we're, I mean, if the city is very hung up on a skate park, then I guess we can reset it out if that helps. Um, but I mean, again, we're just an advisory board, but that was our, our assumption. Um, can we go back a page? Just, I want to see exactly where the park is located. I don't remember exactly. If you go down Main, you take a left. Yeah. I just wanted to see what was next to it. it was Surrounded more by housing. 
Okay, that's they're right all across the street. The school's across the street to the south. Okay, that's right. I just wanted to make sure. That's one. And maybe tell me my mental picture of it. Honestly, I'm actually perfectly fine with the little pool of skate of a skate park. I mean, it might not be much, but I can see it. I can imagine it getting used from people of different ages and genders. Because, like you said, if you have a bike, and most people have a bike that they could use that for, it's like a little hill <clears throat> in an enclosed environment. Yeah, I'm going to call it a skate park, but I mean, you got a scooter, a bike, you can do whatever, you know, anyone wants to do. So it's just a, a means of. It's just a different amenity to a park. Right. Okay, so in my opinion, I'm actually fine with that. Did your parents like the skate park that was here? I don't know. <laughs> Probably not, but does that add to the insurance yeah. to an HOA? That was the front ground. Is sure. that what you looked into? Yeah. I more than we look. I would think the insurance costs would go up. That was it's, it's, uh, that's a good point because it's since it's owned by the HOA, the neighborhood has potential liability. So the skate park will also be signed. Um, of course, there'll be signs that say that you'll need to wear a helmet and just safety, general safety. Um, I, yeah, I'll say required to wear safety. Year and I'm, I'm not an insurance expert. I don't know if that covers everything. Probably not. Um, but yeah, it will increase HOA dues. Um, which is why we wanted to know if they were willing to um, pay more. And most of them said yeah, but up to a point, and it was within that range. I mean, the thing that's always confused me, I think it would have certainly made sense if the city pushed for a skate park at Jesse May on their property that they took care of. But for some reason, the city didn't want one here, but now they want to put one in Bryn Hill where Bryn Hill takes care of it. I mean, that's my strongest feeling here is it's somebody else's park. This isn't granted anybody can go use it, but they're taking care of it. And I would defer to the energy of that neighborhood since they're the ones. And I guess what I picked up from start to finish is, no, thank you. We don't want a skate park. You've also said, which confuses me, it's the most expensive option, which means that we pick a cheaper option. It actually leaves more money in a parks fund that could be used somewhere else. So that whole, yeah, yeah I don't quite Except get the pool and Pardon? the community center. Pardon? It's like for the pool and the community center. Yeah. It, it could be put wherever. We could put a park in right. the old part of town. Yeah. 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 How is how does it was it looked into for a, spl a splash pad? I know when we've asked and we've looked and we ourselves, some of us here have done and asked around and done you know, looked into it with when that question has brought up or the idea of a splash pad. The idea of the splash be? pad was discussed <clears throat> and the uh, sort of the cons of the splash pad is that it couldn't be used year round. Mm -hmm. um, it's also expensive. Um, there right, is issue of climate change. But and that area you can have it be a cut three in one or a two in one if you go like the civic center in Hillsborough, there's, you know, there has rock area and then they put tables there with umbrellas. If you go to other parks, there's like, um, uh, what do you call it? A, the, what is it? A canopy thing or right near it to where kids can play with other things and other times of the year. And then in the summer, it's where, you know, it gets turned into the rocks or, or whatever is there. The structure is used right. as a splash pad. Um, Again, we were more directed instead of making it a passive park to provide more active amenities. So that's where we've gone. And again, it's not that either also that I'm fully against it. I just want to make sure that we're all asking the right questions and that it is something of like, you know, compared to the size of the city, 
is this a good time right now for a skate park? And I just want to make sure that we all hear, which is, I believe, the job of our board is to all make sure that we're asking the right questions and making sure that things are being asked and, and looked at prior to making the decision of moving forward at the park. And did later on down the line, I hope, you know, that's the way we go of the skate park, that it doesn't come back into like, why was this here? Or, you know, X, Y, and Z happened. Why was this not asked or what? So I think we're all just trying to do the due diligence and, and making sure we're asking the questions of what was looked at. Um, right. Burnt Hill community being informed of and if the HOA is, then how does that affect those residents that do live in the Burnt Hill community and the noise level and those homes right around there? So I just want to make sure that we are voicing that and that, that those things have been looked at. Yeah. The other thing about the splash pad is this is not large. This is less than right. um, an acre. So, and I'm assuming a splash pad would bring even more people to the park and the city might want a larger area, more centralized near the, the main street. So like other cities do with Hillsboro, um, Beaverton, I believe. So, um, but yeah, we were directed to make more active amenities. Uh, and, what's the, what kind of concrete you guys can use? I was curious, some of you skate competitively. It's an absolute ice sheet. When it rains, so for in Oregon, you know, between four to six months, you can't use it anyway. Yeah. So I'm just curious, what are you guys going to use or planning on to do to offset that to make it usable year round? We have kind of honestly gone that far down the road. We have we have a skate park designer that we use. We have an in-house guy who does the designs, <clears throat> and the builder will take those and put together construction documents. But um, and we can voice that you know what what materials could we use that can make this used. Or of the year, sure. Um, part uh, in that rendering, the one side was open, and we took that into account that we didn't want standing water in there. So, you know, that was a big thing. It's like we could put a drain in the bottom, but the drain's probably going to fail. So, you know, we don't want safety in that way or not to be used because there's water in it. Mm -hmm. So, keeping that open, keeping the drain, age, you know, just making it as usable as much of the year as possible. Sure. Yeah. And then also, like, in the, having a skate park as part of this is just there's this whole community is, has a bunch of different amenities. You know, like look at a lot of these communities that just put a basketball court and everything, mm -hmm. you know, they go to shelter and everything. But every single one of these parks has a different attraction, sure. You know, and this this just falls in line with that. It's you know, it's just another different thing that you can go through this chain of parks and experience something totally different. Yeah. Is there any kind of big fencing around the skate park? Uh, the idea was that we would put fencing in locations where any kind of falls might happen, you know, just on those edges, even though they're minimal heights <clears> and less than this table, but, uh, or where skateboards could potentially, you know, shoot off to the trail or something like that. that those were concerns we had in our previous skate parks. But if I've got my little kid in the adjoining area, what's to keep them from running over there and falling off the edge? Certainly, we can look into... You know, fencing the skate park. That's not. I mean, I just think, uh, Mr. I think there's a lot of potential liability issues that would concern me. I mean, first of all, I don't want any kids to get hurt, but kids just run around and they don't know what they're doing and they take their little bike. And yeah. And none, none of the ramps are going to be over four feet in height, but they're also not what they call free fall or what's the vertical drop? Vertical drop. There won't be any vertical drops. They're all sloped ramps. Yeah, uh, they're concrete. Yeah, they're concrete, but yeah, they're pretty good. They're keeping vertical falls to a minimum. Yeah, uh, the idea was that you know a large age group could be on it safely. Is there an advantage for the city to have a skate park versus something else? Oh, or it's just their preference. Yes, we were we were asked by the city to explore skate park. Um, this was our. Uh, so, for example, when you mean the city skate park, you mean the staff wants a skate park, right? Correct. Right. And Dustin said he wasn't in on that. So, you're saying there's a couple. Yeah, I don't quite understand that. To be honest. 
I have just, okay, I have visited with members of city council and their intent, their, their, their desire is to see some kind of park facility for adolescents. And if adolescent boys use it more and have an active use instead of getting into trouble, that's the goal. I don't think anybody at all is wedded specifically to a skate park or a half pipe, but that seemed to be a, a common frequently mentioned idea because I think when people think of active use for adolescents and maybe boys in particular to keep them busy outdoors and social, that's a concept that people think of, not because it's the thing people want or the thing that is, um, you know, that's what we are going to do and that's the only option. That's not the idea. It's just, I think skate park is the concept that that is associated that is commonly associated with, but not necessarily the only thing for, for trying to have a place for adolescents, particularly boys, to go and be social and active outdoors year round, also. That that's all this is. So I don't the city's not wedded to a skate park per se, but if there isn't there is more active use or different active use that targets uh, adolescents who don't have as many things at different parks and it's year round, that would be wonderful to keep them busy and outdoors. But why, why not do it? My main thing, it's a good idea, but why, why not do it here at Jesse May? This is the big hangout. There's a restroom here. I'm all in favor of it. It just seems weird to me to put it over in Bryn Hills neighborhood, they have to take care of it. There's no restrooms, it's close to houses. Uh, I don't think it's necessarily a bad idea, but put it over here on the city's, in the city's main park and yeah. bring the kids over here. They already come over here anyway. We've got restrooms here. Where are you gonna put it? The, the, uh, take something out. Uh, you could take out the basketball court. It's not used much. I mean, it's, you're only talking here, as you said, a few hundred square feet. I mean, no, 2,500. 2,500. 2,500. Yeah, because the difference is that that's, no, this library, library is 2,500 square feet. Oh, so, that's that's there the, so, to, to answer your, your question about Jesse Mays, two reasons. Number one, um, Jesse Mays has traditionally been the location for the garlic festival, and to put in anything in the open field wipes out space for that or any other event that we need that we might want to have here. So it takes up space that we need. And the other thing is that if we put in any new park facility at Jesse Mays, the city has to come up with the money outright to pay for it. Whereas development of Green Hill with system development charges, that development generates the money to do that. And with development agreement, we have parks in that development. So there's two different reasons. Um, the main thing here, though, is that there's desire to have something outdoors year round that's a, that has appeal with adolescents. We have, you know, because we have splash pads, we have a little little playgrounds. Um, pickleball is popular with all ages, but a lot of the time it's adults too. But something that really kind of lets adolescents go and be active outdoors is is really the goal. It's not so much that concept is the goal, but it's what. Who that is a park amenity for is the goal. So would the neighbors of this neighborhood like their tiny little cute park becoming the hangout for adolescents? I don't I don't think most of the people of Brent Hill would say, I mean, to me, this kind of amenity belongs in a bigger style of park. I'm not opposed to it. I just don't think this is a great location. Well, I think I'm, to, I'm changing, I'm changing my mind. Um because it's small. To me, it's small. Um, and like you said, it doesn't have a bathroom, so they will have to go eventually. Yes. So where? Yeah. Bushes. <laughs> well, there'll actually be a restroom in the phase four park. Well, there would be people. Code five. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what would you, what about lighting for this park in a particular area here? Just out of curiosity. We are proposing lighting in the park. There'll be street lighting around the park. Okay, so no lighting in the park, which right. would probably for your reduce. Yes, reduce the amount of time that, as you say, they would like to stay there. I don't think we have a big enough problem, as you would see, Don. We're not that big of a city, so I think what you're imagining is a bigger city problem. This is my in my. 
My yeah. view now is that it's a new area. The housing hasn't been sold yet. Right. And I know what the park did here. Nobody liked it. There was a few that liked it. It was noisy. It was not what anybody wanted. And going into a new development, the new owners of those homes will be aware that they're going to have a skate park right by them. Right. And that's why we're hoping to have your approval or have your sign off. And then we can go forward with this design because um, Lennar hopes to have um, homes in phase five start construction or permitting process in February. Mm -hmm. So we want to let those new details. owners know this before they sign on the dotted line for a home that they will be purchasing a home close to a skate park. All of our new sales consultants left on the parks. Because I know we have that problem in the east area with homes and supposedly yeah. builders not telling those new owners what was going to be behind their homes. So yeah, I mean it, it doesn't help us with sales, you know, like you're saying well, some people don't want to come by <laughs> some people don't, some people do. I mean it's their choice whether they're gonna live there or not. But I think if they're told ahead of time um they're informed. Yeah, they're informed and I think it would be better than here at Jesse Mace, that's for sure. Yeah, I, I guess my, my big question that I have well, as well with this is from a liability perspective, because it's been told to us as the board that this is all being handled by the city. Liability is on the city if it were to happen, that the residents have no issue with this. This is from people that work here. So I would be shocked if you were to put this out there and say, oh, by the way, your dues are going to be affected by somebody getting injured and somebody who practices law. It's a lawsuit waiting to happen. And then the people that are going to pay for that lawsuit are the people that live in that neighborhood, not the rest of the city, even though it's shared by the rest of the city or people from the outside or whatever it may be. Um, I guess I'm, my question is, who is ultimately paying for it? Who's handling potential lawsuit issues or medical bills and things like that that may come through? Because we're, we have very varying... Opinions. I know because we're being told it's a city park Correct. that city. the entire city can use, but the HOA is maintaining it. So who covers the insurance on that? Both entities? HOA. It, just the HOA. The HOA picked up the liability. Yeah, they'll have liability insurance, okay. and they pick it specifically for what amenities the communities have. Um, so if anything were to happen, it would be the HOA insurance that picks it up. The easement's just there to allow uh, city residents to use the park. Uh, the insurance will hopefully pay for it, but if you had an incident, they might cover it, but then they might triple your rates. Based well, on Wouldn't you get the same thing with a slosh pad, though? Pardon? Wouldn't you get the same thing with a slosh pad? Need liability insurance for that? Oh, you need what, liability liability falling. insurance for any park. The off chance someone does something stupid with human nature, uh, you you could argue there's some line that will that too. Yeah, yeah. And the maintenance of a splash pad. Um, again, this isn't as large as <laughs> like a skate park per se, but it's just <clears throat> no, for sure. Yeah, it's definitely small designed yeah. to not have those or minimize fall hazards, and it, it will be signed to encourage or safety and use of all of the safety gear. It's probably so, half the size of this building or less. It's about the size of this room, would be my guess. Thank I, you. I do a lot of like doing gym floors, athletic flooring. Okay. You, you know, like this looks like three racquetball courts. There's 800 feet per racquetball court. Like the sort of space. It's, it's, it's about the size of this room. 20, this is 40 by 60. Yeah. It's 20 yeah. by 60. Yeah. So, yeah. Just a little different configuration. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, again, this is just a first get in front of you, see how it lands. You know, this this is definitely not it being constructed the way it's, it sits right now. It's, we haven't even taken this to the designer yet. It's just our in house guy with passion. So, um, you know, it doesn't have to be that big. It doesn't, 
that can be that configuration. You know, that can those configurations can come later. It was more never seen does this amenity land and can we move forward? No, I for sure. The maintenance is kind of like I think it was you, Sherry, was mentioning that. How are we going to tell our new residents what's going in there? Um, I mean, obviously, the sooner we get an answer from you guys, the better, because we can say the skate park's going in there, but we can't tell them what type of skate park. We like to show, you know, we'll show the rendering and other things. Somebody, there's like, oh, well, we thought it was going to be like a pump truck, like Reed's crossing. This is like an actual ramper. So, I mean, sooner we get um i mean we'll, we can go through this, like local rendering but the sooner we get something the better for everybody so, sure. yeah. i mean i'm just not sure it becomes i i think the goal of a hangout for adolescents is a great idea it's just my experience is skate parks are no longer as popular as they used to be uh i'm like uh, a couple others i looked at the skate parks i don't see a lot of junior high kids using the skate parts, except what I saw was they tend to, at certain times of the day, just hang out. So they play music and they sit around the perimeter and they visit and it's kind of a hangout. Okay, I mean, that's of some value, but I don't see them using it for exercise and and this vision. Um, well, I have seen um, um, several younger boys, probably about eight, eight years old, you know, on their skateboard up and down the street. So I, I think that there are. But the some, city's talking about they want the older kids something for them. That was the discussion. No, well, they'll get they older. They get older. Um, I have a feeling it's gone. And this would be from living in town for quite a while and knowing, sort of looking around, knowing how many, how many estimates, how many skateboards there are in town. I have a feeling this is. Not so much a skate park as a bike park. It will probably be bikes. It'll probably be kids on with their little scooters. Scooters. Hot It'll be roller skates. It'll be that type of thing. Or the young, probably the younger kids is what I'm thinking. Of the parks that I visited, skating was very much the minority. It was bicycles to get the hand. Yeah. Yeah. The learning to scoot. Right. That's <laughs> sort of just like any other park. The yeah. traffic. Who's there would obviously change depending on the time of day. I mean, I'll, I've said enough, but my main thing from start to finish is it's primarily a Green Hill Park. They're covering the upkeep, liability, all that. I would defer to what they want. Now, I don't know. It sounds like we're kind of spinning our heels. If, Bill, if we're feeling like it's kind of a done deal, then so be it. But are we allowed at this point to actually decide what kind of park we want? Um, or I'll, I'll adapt however that is. So I want to be clear, this is not a done deal. And I, as I said, the idea is something to be for active use for adolescents year round outdoors uh, and social. It's, it's, it's an amenity that serves that population because that population is one of the less served in our existing parks. So it's not a done deal. I want to say that again. This is not a done deal. Um, but we have a population that, that, that leadership has stated it would like to have some kind of amenity for them or amenities for them because that's been something we've not done as much for. And, and that population, those are the ones that get in trouble if they don't have other things to do. Is the thing. So that's the idea. That's just the idea behind it. Um, it. So it's not a done deal. But I think what they would like to do is meet that goal. And this is potentially one of those things that can do it. But if there are other things based on feedback that they've gotten, they're welcome to come back with a different concept, but you know, it, it would be nice to see something there that meets the needs of that particular part of our youth that just don't have that yet. Not necessarily that, but some sort of amenity. Can you say what age group you're envisioning when you say that? Adolescent, so probably 10, 11, 12 and up. 
I don't see 18 year olds hanging out with 12 year olds here, is what I'm saying. I These are not. the kids who start with their scooters and start with their skateboards. This is smoother. This is this concept anyway is smoother, less of a fall. But that's the attempt at getting at a younger adolescent. But that's the idea is something 10, 11, yeah. 12 and up, basically. But if we go any smaller than that or anything that doesn't do that, then you're going to take that age group out of that and turn it more into a younger, you know, if that's what the main concern is. I think the futsal will go more towards that. Mm -hmm. And I think if you really are going to hit that age group, it would have to be something around the realms of this concept where it has the the dips and, and all of that to entice that age group. A little bit of risk. Yeah. Well, and I guess, exactly. <laughs> that's where I'm coming from. Because if you yeah. want to entice yeah. that age group, that's where the risk, and that's exactly where I want to make sure that we're aware yeah. of that. I think earlier on we had talked about the foot on, and you said that one was not going to be. It's uh, it's not cemented. I don't know the word for the the type of. It's mean, an acrylic. Typically. Yes. Yeah. So, and I know we had last time we met, we had talked about something about a turf field or something with that turf. Second, that pool, can, second highest pool. Okay. Yeah. 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 Like, that can go. Is did we decide on doing something with turf in the other and phase four, yeah. or is that something we that looked can, at the cost of turf? Actually, turf is more expensive than yeah. even the It's really more okay. expensive to install. So, it, you know, we have a large lawn area. And right, they, phase four. four. Yeah. Or yeah. whatever you want to use it for. Um, but doing turf was um, a budgetary right. strain on that one. I mean, I think oh, go ahead. if you look at um, my experiences over by at Pilate, the new school, so they put in a giant uh, fake turf field. And as far as the adolescent issue that Bill brings up, it's extremely successful. I mean, I think that's a good goal, but. Um, I think this type of park, a small one, it's not really catering to our group. Uh, my experience if we're able to, the goal is this adolescent group, uh, fake turf year round field, the kids can come at, and they can play multiple sports. Uh, that place over there, there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of adolescents every week coming to use the fields for all different kinds of organized activities. And then they come and hang out with their buddies some of the times and sit around and kick the ball. And uh, I, I think the adolescent idea is not a bad idea, but I think there's better ways to do it. The, the other reality of this is a lot of the kids I see, they're just kind of sitting around. Most of them aren't on a bike. The other one is getting kids moving and active. And uh, I think the fake turf is, is a very successful way to do it. I mean, at Pilate, it's proof of it. It's used constantly. So I guess what, when's your I guess when do we have to have like when when's your is there a deadline that you guys are looking for in regards to rendering being complete? I mean at this point I guess I'm asking are is this basically I mean I know we say we're not done but we're basically done or is there something that we should then send this back out to the Bridgewood community I guess one and ask and kind of see what their thoughts are since they live there and then two we want to look at additional options as well. Or is this kind of a done deal? Unless we're moving on. So again, um, home building is targeted to schedule in February. Okay. So the process for this park is a design review application that would be submitted to the city, mm -hmm. and it's a, a city review, city staff review. There would be public notice that goes out. Sure. Um, for feedback. Um, but we were hoping that tonight we could get your sign off on this proposal. And yeah, we're, we're really wanting to move ahead. Right. I mean, it is I can offer very important that the neighbors who move in and purchase these homes know what's happening. No, what's yeah. going to be in those. Yeah, I understand. You guys are see yeah. Well, I mean, I guess, I guess yeah. the survey, I guess, just informs people, one, of what's going on, and it's directly to them. Um, and then they they're aware of what the outcomes are at the same time, too. Do How, they want it? I mean, are the closest houses well, that are occupied to this park right now? Oh, none occupied. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. 
Yeah, the current homes, uh, they're over. They're not uh, allowed to not be Yeah. 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 Can, I, can I make a suggestion so you all yeah. don't feel like your view is bullish? Yeah. Here's what I would suggest. Um, perhaps we ask specific community design to come back with a, this would be option A, and then come back with an option B. So the, let this idea simmer, come back with something that tries to, you know, meet, meet some po policy objective of outdoor year round, pre-adolescent, adolescent, that sort of thing. That's the goal. Um, and come back with a second and then just kind of weigh it and and then we move forward with the preferable. It sounds like does this have I mean is is the futsal concept see, that's that seems to be well received overall by everyone? The futsal concept, does that seem well received? Love the futsal. Don't okay. know that if we move that pickleball court, we put two on there. It's really quite quite <laughs> yeah, so okay. yeah, and that was more we yeah. put that on there to show that it would fit. So, so, so yeah. So I guess my suggestion would be let what you all have said in this conversation, Simmer, let them come back with a plan B with the futsal there and something else instead of this, but trying to meet need that we're trying to meet and then come back and kind of weigh it one more time and then they can move forward. Can we can we do a preliminary yay or nay before you want a straw poll? <laughs> Before we do move to that, let's see if enough of us are in agreement whether or not we are fine with this park design or not, whether we need to do the A or B part. Maybe just to get to see what everyone thinks. So somebody would have to make a motion to approve this. No, we're just going to do a poll right now. Yeah, to see how each person feels. So, yeah, I take a motion to take a poll to see how everyone feels about this. This design. Okay. So, I guess all those in favor of. Is that what I understand that correctly? Yeah. Yeah. They have the current plan. Is that kind of what I'm asking? Are we going to the division? Okay. So, I guess Don, I guess we'll start with you again. Don? No. Matt? No. Okay. Jared? Yes. Patty? Yes. Okay. Evan? Yes. Okay. Thank Carl? You. No. Okay. You? I, I'm more of a no, too. Then we'll go to the next option. Okay. That's, if you don't mind, that's four no's, three, three yeses is what I wrote down, just to make sure I have. I didn't put names to it. I it was a poll. It was a straw poll. <laughs> So, so it's a little water to where everyone feels. Yeah. Since we already spent yeah. a lot of time discussing, just wanted to know where everyone's there. Yeah, I okay. So does that seem like a reasonable idea for them to come back with the B and then? Okay. And I think come back to with more of a structure. Like my question was in regards to the HOA. So if the HOA is going to be responsible as a resident, what is real? What should I look for as a resident? Like, are my dues going to go up? Is it gonna go up in three years because of the park in the future? I would like to know those to make a decision. I'm not against the park at all. I do feel it would be a great thing. I just wanna make sure I get dotting my T's and crossing my eyes for future residents or for future things that will come back to why we're this. So I would like to know before saying yes is more concrete answers on the HOA responsibility in the future, not the right now, maybe the right now in the future and more of the safety features. If we're wanting to gear this to a wide range of ages, so what are the, the the safety features around it for the skates not to go out to the street, um, the lighting? What are those safety features that were were were? I I would like to know more in depth of, of kind of like those concerns. Yeah, I, I do agree with that. And the only other suggestion I have that maybe something to add would be just a wall. You know, for like wall and stuff like that, just something to hit off of. It doesn't have to be something complicated, just something like that. Yeah, it's kind of a short list. I, just, I, I throw out bad ideas. I understand they're bad, but that doesn't bite critical thought. Uh, a turf putting green, uh, picnic area, a ping pong area, pump, a pump track, a wiffle ball park. Like wiffle ball is kind of a big deal, mm -hmm. or like a kickball park. A trampoline. 
Oh, I want that liability. <laughs> they call it attractive business for reasons. That's what my 13-year-old grandson wants. He lives right, right there. Yeah, exactly. So, so, anyway, so just kind of putting those out to us. They don't regret it. Just, Maybe there's something there. Just so. a reminder of all of the amenities that are already in Bryn Hill. Yep. We already have the putting green. We have bocce ball, cornhole. We have chess tables. Um, several different types of play structures and play areas, the basketball courts, fitness equipment. Um, we have the specialty garden and um, pickleball courts. So where we've ended up is, like I originally said, that this was intended more to the design intention was to have this more of a passive park because it sort of matched the area off to the west of Bryn Hill, sort of match or be designed more nature area. And through our discussions in the, with the parks board meetings, I mean, our first meeting on this park was in 2022. Um, so we've gone through so many iterations of phase four and this part where we've landed today providing even more amenities than we started with and but trying to incorporate these amenities into the overall feel of Bryn Hill and offering different options for different types of people. So, and sorry, Matt, I thought I heard you saying you, a pump track. I think that's what you guys called it. We're just, yeah, we're so just kind of, I, I like track. that more than just kind of the classic that. Um, another idea came to mind, uh, like a special needs park. I do have some with, with some special needs. I know the one over at 53rd Park has been a huge success. Mm -hmm. um, that doesn't quite be, I think, what city leadership was talking about, but certainly caught some throw out there as well. We have on that note, we haven't uh, picked play equipment for phase four yet, and so that can really take it into account. That'd be great. Yeah. I, I think there's there's, a, there's an appetite for that sort of yeah, thing. Yeah, I, I would agree. Yeah, yeah. but in general, we've talked about that before. Yeah. yeah, and there is going to be ping pong gaming tables in phase four. Okay. Um, there is a large turf area that we could do wiffle ball. You know, sure, it's, it's a big enough area we could do that. Okay, there. stuff like that. So I think I missed that meeting last week. <laughs> no, it's okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, fair enough. I think for me, I guess by my I'll close with this and so we can move on um, as well. And I guess you guys can say whatever you want to say as well. But um, I think two parts I bring to the table. I think one, um, I guess I'll say I'm a little bit disappointed that we did put out a survey and it never made it to your guys' lap um, as to far as far as what the people in that neighborhood wanted to see. Um, and then two, I guess I'll say as well, because um, I think there's a lot of kind of confusion, I guess, and more so from my end is that for months we've been told that this was all handled by the city. And then this is my first time hearing it from non-city people. And even from city people now, I guess, the first time that's actually not the case, that's handled now from the actual HOA. And I think that, I guess, gives me, like, me some hesitation um, as somebody that actively lives there, uh, that we were kind of told for the last six months that's going to be one thing, and then we're finding out tonight that that's not the case at all. Um, and so... I guess that's my concern. And maybe I'm missing something and somebody can add something into that, but I guess that, that's my reservation as to why perhaps I'm a little surprised, I guess, perhaps to hear that. Um, but I guess my my reserve for saying yay or nay is I'd like to, it's more like you were saying, it's more information on yeah, what does that look like? And what are potential risks? So yes, it is used by the city, but it can immediately impact the people that you know, live in those 600 homes. So. Mm -hmm. Unless I missed something from everybody else, I don't know. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So I just wanted to even make, make clear. So, so Mara has a clear way for here. So I don't, I can't remember. I don't. I was a part of what was proposed for the first three. This is the fourth, I think, right? Yeah. Yes. For the first three renditions. Um, did we have any active play besides the park? Was it just a play gym? Or? So the last one we presented had two more nature play okay. areas with 
passive gravel trails and seedy areas and very, it was very uh, angular. Mm -hmm. And one of the comments we received from the board last time was to make it flow more like the rest of the parks. And so um, <clears throat> it definitely was a different style, but more passive, more, um, uh, yeah, just more right. passive parks. Okay. Uh, Attracting the, the youth, so to speak, the city was correct. correct. Yeah, yeah. Okay, it didn't have any. Um, so I listen. I think it's Lenard can get that survey um, mm -hmm. and see what the top three um, asks were. Like yeah, what lots were from the residents. Sure. Um, we can apply that to as a as an alternate. I mean, within reason, I don't know. Yeah. It was like a community center where we just can't afford that. Um, so yeah. If it was like a splash pad or. Yeah, a splash pad one, green space two. And then I think it was, was it big turf? Turf. Yeah. Turf. Yeah. Yeah, I think it was number three or something. Like, do you think that was targeting the active or active use that um, the city was, that off the top of your head that the city was wanting, or was it mostly just. Um, adolescent type. Say it one more time. Was it like mostly just adolescent type once for the park, or is there anything like for the active youth, like for like the teenagers that are wanting to rush to do something, uh, not get in trouble, but mm -hmm. keep them busy? Is there anything like that? Or? I think that's what council was more geared yeah. towards. Am I right? More yeah. towards that. Actually, I don't think they really yeah. shared that. Yeah. They didn't tell us. Sentiments yeah. with us. They, with that. This is the first I time I've heard about it that it was yeah. actually for that purpose. Yeah. Did the survey identify yeah. any amenities that target the, the youth, like an active? It was a splash pad, open green space, and a turf space that had like soccer nets and stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so those are the top three. And then the, four was pickleball futsal. Okay. So with the turf, we're providing space in phase four, sure. the green space. Um, we have the futsal. Mm -hmm. um, if it's, sorry, what were the first two? Uh, the splash pad in the open space area, those... Yeah, that's not really geared towards what city council is trying to with their goals. Yeah, no, so not there was. wasn't any other amenities that we threw out. Well, we didn't know. I didn't guess we did. We weren't aware that that was the city's intentions, okay. and that's that's what their target market was looking at. We were just told in our last meeting with Brent with Brent Hill was to put together a few different options, and so we those were the ones that we came up as a board and threw those out. Uh, it is a challenging demographic <laughs> for yeah. sure to for adolescents to, to find something where they fit in and yeah realize. and I guess now that we know that that that's the target audience that we could look at potential options if we would like to okay. if, if that's what you prefer we can we have are more than happy to do that well there is a shortage in fields mm -hmm. I'll tell you that and if you look at all of the extracurricular at the cities, you know, in our city, we don't have outdoor, you know, structured, you know, leagues or anything here. And coming from a perspective of working a lot with soccer leagues, baseball leagues, and all of that, there is a shortage in field. And, and, and that's why awful lot of you are just the elementary schools here. Those fields are being used by leagues constantly. I mean, there's been already requests from the principal telling the youth, the teenagers to stay off the fields because they're being used by leaks because that is, and that's where the youth is wanting to go. And we're getting remarks of as parents, tell your teenagers to stay off the leaks because, you know, off the fields because the, you know, so it's something that's been, and if you go like on Facebook and on, on the school's things, it's, it's, you know, there is a shortage in yeah. the field. Unfortunately, this really isn't, the most appropriate place. <laughs> uh, right. There's not enough space. Um, but it and is a bit of gathering of where they can play. I don't know. I'm trying to come up. I don't know what ideas others to come up with for that age group. I guess I just don't know. I don't know what else to present to be just very like, honest. I don't know what we can do. Um, I feel like if we present something that the city wants, it's completely different from what. Um, the residents want. 
No, we're, we're trying to satisfy, I don't think it's, we can satisfy both parties. Um, so. Have we thought also about another basketball, just throwing in there? Because the other one cannot be used. There's a lot of issues with the flooding, flooding and where it's at. That's a lot of remarks also that I've mm -hmm. heard and gotten and received from the Bring Hill community itself. And that, that you know, and basketball is popular around that age group. What if it's something to where it could be one court of basketball? I don't know. I'm throwing out. But I'm answer. sorry, you said that the basketball court here isn't used. Is that correct? It's the one over there in Bryn Hill, because of flooding, that one's also one that cannot be used oh, year round. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, it and it's constantly bucks. closed. Yeah. And it is used by kids on with their little bikes yeah. and yep. things and skating all the time by with the families and the young not kids. as a basketball yeah no, so this would actually be good for that then so this the skate park would make more sense like that the case more kids use it as like a flat yes and no because dangerous. this is more deep. Dude, okay where if it was a flatter area then they could do their skating and learn to I you a know ground great basketball court but then again yeah. it's not um going towards the adolescents. Okay. I mean although the basketball part of it would. Right. If you make a three on three, that's kind of popular now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a single a single basket would be enough. The other the other thing that's not hard to do, but most places don't, they make baskets now that are fairly fairly easy to lower and raise, yep. which is really a plus when I take my 10-year-old over, I can lower it. Now we're doing a park in banks right now and we're going to use those so all the age groups can absolutely nice. utilize it. And then that court that we, the futsal court could be a multi-use court. You know, there could be a, a hoop on that at one end of it. You know, it's, and then first come first serve, whoever's using it gets to use it for. And if you put a half court basketball, some of the kids are still going to play around with it on the bikes, just like Sherry said, mm -hmm. do tricks, be active, which is what we want. Mm -hmm. So I mean, it's a multi-use now. So it's kind of in between then. Yeah. I mean, that's fine with one R. I mean, if that's what everybody wants, then we can just go for it and do that. I just don't want to spend any more time with that. So I feel like we're going to come back and do this whole process and half is going to disappear and half is going to agree. Mm -hmm. But if we can all agree now that like a basketball court is is more preferred than a skate park, then we're happy to do that. Ricky, did all of the city council want a uh, skate park? I don't remember the discussion. No, no. I mean, I it, it, wasn't, it wasn't specifically, well, let's put it this way. Um, the the broader discussion of a skate park um there was conversation about it and it ended up being a goal of the biennial budget for the parks for parks department okay um now that's a goal there, there's a bunch of goals that the budget for the parks department that the budget committee which is council and some at-large members um they, they basically have these bullet points of goals for the parks department. It doesn't mean that we absolutely have to do it, but that's the goal for this budget by any. Mm -hmm. And that's an explicit thing. Work with the developer on a skate park and restroom. I mean, that's that's explicit in the budget that budget committee approved and then city council adopted. And there was that conversation. But the thing is, I've inherited this just a week ago, and I'm trying to come up. I have went back through and tried to find the history of where the skate park idea came from originally and why. And the bottom line here is that, um, you know, and then and then I kind of, you know, visited with a few city councilors and not all of them. I didn't like do a straw poll at a, at a city council meeting or anything, but just people who have seemed to take interest in parks I talked to. Um, or who I heard mention the, you know, Bryn Hill Parks. And what I got from them was, and then I confirmed with the mayor, was um, the thought out there is generally that something for, ad something for you know, adolescents to do. And, and I think that that was the intent of the skate park. But I think the intent, why we were all in a little bit of disagreement of the skate park, and correct me if I'm wrong, but what we were told from, what is the other city staff 
director person's name Steve, Steve. Steve. We were told was that that came from a 2015 2016 survey that was going to go for what you're talking about mm -hmm. and so our right. comeback to that was like we're in 2024 now mm -hmm. though that youth that was in 2015 is now in their 20s and they're 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 way past the time of a skate park right, right. and in the time that we are right now and the skate park is i mean don't get me wrong i'm all for it but i just don't feel that this spot and this area around the housing is the the time and the place for the skate park. And I think that was our consensus last time. Mm -hmm. And when, if it came from something that was from 2015, 2016, that's very outdated data and survey data for 2024. And that's what we were told. And that's where it came all into the spin the wheels of, well, why are we gonna do skate park if that was coming back? And so that's where it got all of us into the thinking of, I don't think this is the right time or the right place. And then we're going off of data that was, you know, almost 10 years old. So, I do appreciate uh, that. I, yeah. I guess what I would say is, is uh, I am relaying to you what information I could get in terms of direction about what the intent here is or what the hope right. is. Mm -hmm. How it materializes is a, is a different moving part. Right. And so it sounds to me like some kind of basketball right. court idea might I be. That would be a great idea. A cemented basketball court that can be like a use of a three on three. And if there is kids on the cement on the little bikes, then, you know, if that is, but that it gives a multi-use area. Mm -hmm. And that goes with the flow of, again, we're also wanting to do where it's diversity and age of different ages. So you're going to have even young adults wanting to go play basketball mm -hmm. as little kids can go play basketball or little kids can ride around there. I think that'll be more of a, and, and if we're all worried too about the, um, cautionary of you know liability I think a flat cemented area with basketball and that is less of a liability rather than for that small of a space so do we have a consensus that that would work with Lennar and then you could get it to fly with city council and then we could be done which yeah. is the goal yeah, I mean so are we um, so well, we can take another yeah, poll. Let's do another well, poll. no, I would make I would make a motion. We'll take a poll, and then we can do the motion. Okay. Yeah. Dumb. Good. I like it. Matt. Sure. I'm good. Sure. Patty. For another basketball court. This one's used quite a bit. I I think it would get used. I don't want to offer too much. Like it was gonna kill me. But um, I mean, we can always do something on the other end too. Like if if you don't want just a basketball court, we can go on like a wall, a yeah, wall on the wall. other end. So mm -hmm. my only other option suggestion would be since it's only going to be a half court, just put on one of the long edges of the of the court basketball of the if you so, kept it as a whatever sport courts you have it as now, and you just put a basketball hoop on one of the Oh, you mean a, sort of like in the middle of the futsal court? Yeah, so you have the you have the two long ends. You just put one here and here or here because it's only half a court. I don't know how big a gas court is supposed to be compared to what you have there. Or you could just put it at one end and then you could put a wall for wall ball or several walls. It is and now I'm thinking of tagging, which was yeah, which um, another question. Maybe There's enough space to continue that cord in a million different ways. You know, well, not so for sure from that. those that live there that we see the other basketball courts can't be in use because it's always flooded. Yeah. The pickleball is a, it's so busy that it's always in use and you have to sit there and wait over an hour if you really want to be an adamant and plain in your area it's always in use so taking that information from those that are there and the things that are working the pickleball is working amazing so that's why i think that foot sole that can be combo is a great idea and so the basketball was a very great idea, the basketball court down at the bottom. It's beautiful down there and everything, but I don't think it's serving its purpose as a basketball court. Mm -hmm. So living there and seeing that and hearing it from others is where that idea goes. So you guys, as people who live there, you would want another basketball court? You ask me? Yeah. Um, I guess, yeah, I guess, I'm, I'm, I guess I'll just say, I'm more in support of that than I am of this. 
And so to me then to move it along and not wasting more of their time, mm -hmm. I would give my gate to that. You know, at the end of the day, we're just an advisory board, the season do what season we want to do, but um and, you know, you can also have pickleball lines on. People are bringing on them to make play pickleball there. Yeah. I think having some sort of yeah, yeah, like a shuffleboard or whatever. Yeah, multi use surface or whatever that could be or something, volleyball, yeah, badminton or whatever. I think things like that would attract more. And I think especially too, given I guess one of my other concerns with skate parks was like so close to the elementary school. <laughs> and that was you said that around certain money too. Mm -hmm. I think as far like yeah, we can talk about later. But just so it sounds like you're moving forward mostly. Um, so if we move forward with that, and then maybe make talk talk about more spinner wheels on uh, multi surface activity type, mm -hmm. um, yeah, along with the basketball, obviously. Um, and we do present that the plan of you. Well, we think, yeah, we can go it's up to the board, not to me. What do you, what do you, get? you guys good on that? I like a flat, multifunctional space there. Are you making a motion? Sure. This is my first one. Yeah, there you go. I propose a flat, multifunctional space, game lines be determined, but basketball, right. you know, pickleball, maybe the volleyball. Maybe a shuffle, a shuffle board, <laughs> you know, hopscotch. I can, we can kind of get through those those details later. Mm -hmm. But it's something that can be used multifunction right. across, you know, a lot of different ages. So that's my first proposal. Yeah. Okay. I second it. Hey, thanks. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? That's that. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Hopefully we made some progress. Yeah. 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 So we'll revisit the design and put together a design review application, which we will submit to the city. And um, there'll be an opportunity for public feedback at that time. So. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate you guys being here. Yeah. You know, I guess we'll. You, know, you guys don't have to stay if you don't want. We'll get to the rest of our business. How we can get back to your good. lives and get home to family. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, we appreciate it. Yeah, but you can really comment yet? Because I've walked around there too. We've got the uh, doggy bags, but there's no place to put the doggy bags. Mm -hmm. In uh, phase four, we have waste stations with the doggy bags. Now, bags. Some stations yeah. do, some don't. Mm -hmm. As an avid user of that. <laughs> well, I, I just walked yeah. over there a couple weeks ago and we had the same problem. We were looking for some place to dump the, the bag at. Yeah. So do some dump. <laughs> it should be right where the bags are. If not, people just put the bags down afterwards. Right. And then somebody's yeah. got to go pick them all up. Yeah. We have it over at Sunset Ridge, too. Yeah. Don't <laughs> so mention there's no hole. Thank you for coming. Yeah. 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 It was a mess. We're out of here. Uh, yeah, thank you. That makes me happy to do that. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Did you, I think I don't know. She said did you say next this like this next week, or did she also give like in December? Do we want is it something that we want to tackle right away on the 18th? Um, and do what we need to. I know she's not here to but... present on November 18th. Okay. So go on November 18th. Okay. So presenting this month next or next week. month? Next that'd week. be this month. Okay. Yeah. That's this, that's Next week. Six days from now. Yep. Next Monday. Right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. 18th. Yeah. Yes. And then I guess in regards to that, I guess I will open it up. Does anybody wish to present to city council um, as to where we are or what I would like to? Maybe I'm overstepping. Do we need here, going to out have over. a bullet point of the things that we want to do or? Um, yeah, that's what yeah. we're supposed to do. Yeah. So yes. Did anybody do a bullet point? No. I think that's what we were going to do today. And that was also yeah. the first okay. to do the bullet points of the team at um, the board today. I don't mind sure. presenting. Okay. Yeah. yeah I'm fine, with, fine, with, fine with me. I'm fine with that. I got you. Matt, I'd be there. I'm out of town. But... Okay. Matt? I'm good. Super good. Absolutely. Don? Good. Okay, perfect. All right, then I guess I can, okay, or if you want to be a note scriber, I'll do it as well with you. Okay. And then I can send you as well what we have just to make sure we have everything okay. down. Um, does anybody want to start with things that we feel? Probably talk about our progress with the Parks Foundation okay. on getting funding for the kitchen and other things that we want, making progress towards that. And our progress is zero. <laughs> yeah. But I think that'd be good to let them know that that's the not. Give me a one burner so. Just let them know that we're working with that them. That we're working with them. Um, well, that the next step is that they're going to send out, was it through the utility bill or to through what? That's where they're at, that they're sending what? out a letter to bring awareness to the raising, mm -hmm. fundraising for the kitchen. Yep. So I would say we're at least at five percent. Okay. And then we want to give we want to give kind of like a like a year recap. Is that too much? I mean, we only have what I think we have two or three minutes that we're allowed to talk. If I understood that correctly last time, it was pretty short. She wanted like a short paragraph. We want to give like a. I'll just do like quick little bullet points. Perfect. Um, so I have Parks Foundation. Yeah, I would say one thing that we did this year as well with the, the programming, like the youth programming at the elementary schools. You don't have to do a three minute. You can put a request to put it on the agenda. Yeah, okay. because if we're going to be on the agenda, then okay. So, so you don't need three minutes. The youth okay. Program at elementary schools. Went well, well attended at both or just one? I think more so just one. Mm -hmm. Based on both doing those, the one on what's the community on that side? At, at, at the lobby? Yeah. yeah. The lobby. Elementary. Um, intent to do it again. Do we have an intent to do it again, or what's our intent going forward? I would like to. I think it's something that's needed in the community, and I would like to focus more, not a lot. I don't know if we want to try it again in both, or put more of a focus with another recreational component in Alpalai, if that was where it was better attended. Mm -hmm. Um, and then bring more awareness and put a focus, more focus on there. I would say probably spring and summer or sometime around there in May. I don't know. I think you could talk about it later on, but yeah. And uh, spring, yeah. I mean, the gyms are definitely a wonderful resource because elementary gyms aren't used a lot. High schools are used yeah. constantly. So Okay. Mm -hmm. Anything um, else? Um, was movies in the park or or the ice cream social part of here or no? Was that part of that uh, movie? Uh, we don't have to movies. Yes. We, uh, we haven't done that. Oh, sorry, concert, concert, concert. concert. 
Is that something that, that we that's something that we want to talk about because the attendance is extremely low for high dollars. Right. And I think mm -hmm. that's something good to bring up to council with because I remember we kind of touched on it. Events going on. Can I I'm oh, sorry? I think that's something great, a great point to bring to council. Mm -hmm. So if that is changed for next year based on that, based on the past two years and this year's um, outcome. I think even the both of you had mentioned really great ideas of how to proceed and move forward with something better to focus on right. that will be better attended. Right. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Combine it with a different event, a different event. Maybe use and um, use funds towards the ice cream social. with other events that are going on at the same time. Including music with them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, oh, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. No, 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 please. Do we want to try for a movie in the park? I think that would be fun, but I don't know if it's been if it's been done before. What was the outcome, and did it work out? But we haven't done it here. And last yeah, the time, library uh, did movies. Before. Last I heard, um, before Andy left, is he had a contact in Cornelius. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I did start that conversation. Did you? Yes, and that is not available. And then I went to Robin, and Robin said when they did do it, it was done in here. It was not done outside. Right. And that was her, her the person that was there before her that did that. Right. So she did so, not have too much information. So we just, just mentioned we have a thought about trying to start that. Yeah. yeah. And then I looked, oh, and that's where I looked into it. So to do a movie in, in the park, um, through the company that is the license for the movie, it's 550 for just the license alone. For and one movie or for the year? No, just that's one movie. Oh my God. Yeah. yeah, it's 550. I let them know we were sitting, you know, with all of that. Um, and that's on more of a under 500 in attendance. Mm -hmm. If you go over 500 in attendance, it costs more. Yeah, it, it um, probably wouldn't be. So that's we could movie. potentially use a, um, Concert in the park money towards right. a movie in the park. Yeah. And then right. there are rentals for the blow big blow up screens. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. I could potentially see if um, I could potentially see if maybe a partnering city could let us borrow, but I'm not too sure on that. On the blow up of the the screen blow. Up. Oh yeah. yeah. Is the park only blow. for movies that aren't in the public domain? No, that's any movie. Any movie. Yeah. I bet we could probably show it up like that. Yeah. yeah. I bet we could probably get the business to like if they wanted like to get involved in advertising about to back it. Yeah, I think there was sponsorship. Yeah, sponsorship. You know, throw up a sign or something like could that. We just put up a a sheet instead of getting a big bowl of screen and put up a big sheet if we have a good um on the call. side of Jesse Mays. Good. Test it out yeah. in the grass area. Yeah. And get some poles you can put together and take yeah. apart. And I think part of it, I'm interested to see too what the phase four with the amphitheater in Brent Hill looks like. Because that's this is my, I mean, to me, that would yeah. be where I'd probably that put it. Be, yeah. Because you have tiered seating, you know, you yeah. can figure out the screen, yeah. you know, and you can acquire, you know, at least house a lot of people there. People can get in and out. Mm -hmm. um, it wouldn't be too bad. I mean, that'd be depending on when it's finished. Yeah. I would. That would be amazing. Yeah, I think that'd be the next step I would take. Mm -hmm. Be put in there, whether it's a band or a movie or whatever. My my two cents anyway. Yeah, that would be a good way to that. And people can't miss it. They're gonna hear it either way. In phase four. Mm -hmm. Is that started? You're getting their fields and dirt right now. Yeah. But they've been coined in Yeah. Anything else? Uh, I really want to talk about the oh. park. Well, near, near completion. completion. Yeah. Well, yeah, bylaws done. Mm -hmm. And then we did come up with some like short-term and long-term goals. 
and okay. then things to tackle that way too. And movies in the park and things like that are part of it. So we're attacking those programming is another one. So we're checking some of those off. Uh, short term goals or long term goals? Both. Both. Think about you want to start with that one before you start. Um, it would be the part before that a long term goal. That was more. That was a short term. But then roughly a year. With programming was one of them. Like the sports programming uh, was one that we were looking at. Um, movies in the park was another one. Um, I think we had looking at finishing the dog park. And assistance with that. Uh, the a kitchen term. fund was a long term goal. Yeah, yeah. kitchen one was long term goal. I think. Uh, Large rec center multi use was another one that we kind of a community yeah, center. Yeah, very long term goal. Very long. Term. Term. Very long term. Yeah. We're trying to make things out. <laughs> so we got movies in the park, finishing the dog park. Um, we had yeah. Um, programming. Programming, which we, um, did, which we did like the sports programming at the elementary school. Elementary school. Yep. Programming. Yep. Mm -hmm. Programs. Okay. Trying to think what else we had. Well, that was about it all. So I have three. Mm -hmm. And then long term, we had um, okay, okay. Yeah, the kitchen, potential like community center slash pool. rec center, yeah, aka pool or something. Mm -hmm. Working towards that. Cool. I know Andy kind of put a hold on that as far as depending on the UGB was going to go because he had the location back by Brit Hill and the other one over by Apollotti that uh, they had deemed originally that would include some of these. But um, we'll see what happens, I guess, with legislation there. Yeah, probably. Yeah. What's that? A bond or yeah, bond, yeah, bond or fundraising. Or something. Well, yeah, I think that um, have we talked about a fee to be added on to like the water bill mm -hmm. that will help support our parks? I think we barely touched on it. We touched on that fee or on any rentals because that's what we were hoping on. I think we touched on if that kitchen were to be remodeled. That would be a bring like a more of an enticing. Well, I'd like to know why as... this is on hold for being rented out. Mm -hmm. Do you know why, Bill? This building. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> we're primarily because um, people wanting to use the um, basically it, what it kind of what it boils down to is. Um, it was tough to kind of like w between rentals of trying to use the kitchen and it not being appropriate and not being able to charge enough for rentals using the kitchen because the, it's older and the it, it got to be a management and a revenue versus cost problem mm -hmm. at the end of the day um, having to go in and you know Certain certain renters are really good about cleaning up the kitchen. Others really aren't because of the age of the kitchen and what it can or can't do, the age of the bathrooms, this facility. We can't rent it out for the same rental rates that maybe Hillsborough or even Banks gets for somewhat similar facilities, but we still pay the going rate costs to maintain it. So we're so so that's ultimately what it is. I mean, so this past biennium. We we pulled Jesse Mays out of the Parks and Rec Department so that we could keep track of like how was it even contributing or bleeding money for Parks and Rec. I mean, honestly, we had no, no idea. Yeah, we had question. no idea. Yeah. Um, and we did go through the process of figuring how much we raised. We raised rents on the facility for a variety of different uses, and, and council approved those. Not a ton, but we raised them a bit with pulling Jesse Mays out of the Parks and Rec Department and making it its own enterprise fund so we could keep track of that very thing. Mm -hmm. um, and even with raising rents, like there's a threshold. If you have a great kitchen in, the, in here, if you have a great, you know, it's a great restroom and kitchen and it works really well for a variety of different family and wedding and so-and-so functions, 
you can charge this much rent while you're paying this cost to maintain it. Mm -hmm. We're not able to charge that. <laughs> and it's that ultimately it's that mismatch. Mm -hmm. um, okay. we, we would love, I, I think it's fair to say it would be great to have a remodel of the kitchen so that it's kind of a model. We, we can offer it to more people and frankly get just realistically speaking, match our costs better with how much we earn on rent. Mm -hmm. that, that's, that's it. And it's like, how, how much do you want to rent the place and, um, and bleed? I mean, you want to offer it. You want to have a place where residents can have a this or a that, but at the same time, um, it, it's, it's, it's tough to, to sustain that. So, you know, I, I think conversations you all broader about improving the kitchen would be wonderful <laughs> for a number of different reasons. Um, but that's kind of the crux of it. Um, I think what we're going to do starting at the beginning of the year um, is just, I don't know, we, we need to have a talk about it, but maybe it's just if people want to use this setup in here and they're not going to use the kitchen, maybe we open it up to more rentals, but it's just, you know, we're limited staff. Doing all the rentals is also, um, you know, it's, a, it's, you have to manage all that. Um, so we would like the community to use this place more. And if they want to rent it for different events, that would be great. It's just, especially when you have to clean up and it's, it's more complicated. So that's the bottom line. Anything else come to mind? Good. Good start. Yeah, are we okay? Yeah. Do we have anything else you want to add before we? Long term, so I have the new kitchen appliances, roof foundation, and community center pool. Mm -hmm. Other than that, I mean, it's, I guess at this point, keep it pretty simple. Oh, short term. And we did do a survey like six years ago. I'm not sure whatever happened to that. We did it at the Garlic Festival and other events. Sure. And we marked it down, but what happened to that information? I do not know. I don't think you were here yet. For just maze? No, for the parks. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. well, this was like six years ago. The master. When I was on Parks Department. Okay. Mm -hmm. we, we, we had a big board and People wrote down what their ideas and thoughts, what they needed and wanted, where that information is at. I have no idea. I think Cindy Hurst might have that. It may have gotten into the master plan. I was reading over the master plan recently, and I think it was in there. It was six years ago? It was six. Yes, a little bit over six years because I wasn't on the city council yet. But so, yeah, you know, maybe six and a half years ago. At the, I know I spent quite a few hours talking to everybody mm -hmm. and they put down what they wanted. But what happened that survey, I have no idea. And I don't remember it that long ago. Right. It's my my guess is it it went it was part of what went into the parks master plan that ultimately you all Correct. adopted. Um, but as far as the form, the document, the findings of the survey, I have not seen such a thing. <laughs> but that was before my time. Yeah. Um, I mean, what I mean, I guess what I would say one thing to keep in mind is I mean the community's changed a lot in six years. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. going so you know kind of going back out, um, thinking about how to go back out when you know if and when to kind of get that kind of feedback would be great that was on our short terms too outreach engagement yeah, you know, yeah. being more you know for that reason we're kind of in a funny spot you know um for better or worse because you know that we're about you know we, we're literally out of land the plan new new in this city i mean yeah. if somebody wanted to do something my first question would be where. I mean, I, uh, if you have a where, let's work on a plan to finance it. <laughs> but there's, there's really, there's no where, and so it's kind of tough to say. Okay, it's time to dump to to dive full bore into a brand new parks master plan. Well, 
what are you planning? Right. Because right. right. there's no yeah. there's no where to plan right. to do a, a parks a new parks master plan, but. That doesn't mean you can't do some outreach and right. And I think that's what feedback. our goals were all aligned with what we have now. Yeah. The big long, long term goal was that community, you know, well, we're not aware of what's going to happen in the future. But I think all of our goals, we were they were pretty aligned with work with what we have now or the little things that are missing, but that we can kind of fit in there with, you know, like the elementary school, you know, programming and outreach and engagement in current events that are happening, not creating more events, but yeah, I think that that all aligns with right? so, Yeah, I mean, I mean, we have some new folks on here, of course, um, newer folks. I mean, have you all just kind of sat down and seen what you've checked off of the Parks Master Plan and what hasn't been done quite yet, just kind of as a starting point? Have you looked at the Master Plan? I have not. Uh, I guess we have. I, I think I, it needs to be, yeah brought back mm -hmm. yeah so so you know so you know again it your body but um I, you know i we have an adopted parks master plan mm -hmm. and there are going to be things that were successes and check the boxes off and there's going to be things in there that haven't been done yet and you know and, and so maybe maybe that's some kind of starting you know what point. year we finished that uh, I would say five or six. It was right. It was finished right before I started working here. So it was done six years ago. So 2018. I got it pulled open. Yeah, six years ago. So can we get? Is that something that is on the website that we can get to? Or is it yes. That? Yes, it's on the website. We got enough stuff for yeah, Sherry. You're good. And so you know, I guess what I would say is. Maybe review that, see what's been done, see what hasn't been done, and then maybe let that be the starting point for a kind of a new process, at least with a new goal, you know, just kind of get out there and 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 kind of see where people are and things. I mean, personally, I you know, I don't have any personal opinion of how much better a skate park is of doing something than another. But I will say I think I think the futsal idea. Personally, I think that is, is a wonderful thing. Mm -hmm. I've seen Facebook community, I don't comment on Facebook community page posts, but I just I'm, I just look to kind of see what folks are chattering about and what they're looking to, what they want to do. And I do see futsal, are there any local futsal leagues or anything like that well, in Hillsboro? <laughs> you exactly. know? And they're, you know? Are, and they're cool. Yeah. That's been on the yeah. biggest kind of concern and complaint on yeah. there, people asking. Like I can't get my child, I don't want to go over there. Yeah. So our outreach could be looking for someone to start a league for futsal. Not, I don't think not necessary. I think our outreach should be once we're all aligned with what those targets would be, and then I feel our outreach should our outreach should be during kind of like the ice cream social, the garlic festival, events that are currently already happening that we're not changing that wheel, but we're using that time to get community input where we can all here take a turn to have a table and be, you know, ask those yeah. questions and get that input or that data or that information. Um, and I think it is a great idea if we were to start from that master plan to see what was in that master plan that we've done, have not done, and what's not gonna work anymore because the times have changed. This was pre-COVID after COVID, and then with the new growth in North Plains, a lot has changed. So there's stuff in there that probably doesn't make sense anymore to how North Plains is right now. The other thing I would say, if I might, on the topic of the urban growth boundary, uh, one thing, one thing I think that I learned and, you know, during the process of just putting together the new bigger committee to look at the urban growth boundary, um, you know, how much we learned about the folks who may or may not be U.S. citizens but are living here and from other countries and whether or not they're comfortable even participating, whether that's answering a survey, like some people, they don't even want to answer a survey. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they're all, they're all families that come here because a member, at least one member is highly educated, multiple degrees sometimes working for Intel. So like, you know, English language skills are usually pretty good. So it's not so much that English is a barrier, at least for one of them, that's sometimes the case. 
but there's just a, a sense of security of participating, lack of security in participating, a lack of um, understanding of what that like what like this is just harmless input on maybe what an amenity is or or, or where we should grow and and they. I guess what I would put upon you all is help the city figure out how better to reach those folks and get their input on on kind of what how what they feel would make for a better community in terms of park parks amenities for their families. It'll probably be something similar, but I just don't think we don't we as a small city don't even know how best to kind of make them feel comfortable to give input on this on, on topics like this. The HOAs could help you a lot. Like our HOA Sunset Ridge is almost 50-50 all these different countries and we have a good connection through the Facebook presence from everybody. So we could help do some of that. That Don, that would be wonderful because um it, it's just we that's the percentage of, of our growth that has been those households. It's a shame we don't have, it's a big shame we don't have more of how they're thinking and feeling for a variety of reasons. And so you can, you can, you know, you, you can help understand that. That would be wonderful. Well, this is it. Good. This is interesting. So the, on the website says the parks master plan adopted December 4, 2018 was updated CIP July 2012. And when I, so did, what is the CIP? I think the um, CIP was uh, 2000, was it resolution 2109? It's like a couple pages down. What's the, I'm confused, oh, what's, What's our topic now? <laughs> well, I'm just I'm curious because it's we're like, supposed to get a quarterly. Yeah, I have, yeah, I have all that. I think we had to go know with that and then we changed topics. Yeah, so I was just yeah. going into the Parks Master Plan. Yeah, so the county listed as yeah. being on city council. And I don't think I was on city council in 2018. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's kind of weird. Yeah. Are we good with are we the good? bullet points? Yeah. yeah. I cannot. I think we're good. Are we good with bullet points for? Yeah, I'm good with City Council. Yeah. Okay, perfect. All right, then moving on. The last little bit here. Um, I guess, Mr. Weber, any comments at all from you? Well, the only thing, and I don't know if we're at the end, but if Bill can comment at all, because I asked him the question. Um, for some of us, the biggest thing we need besides parks is programming. Uh, I tried last year with some help, but my instinct all along has been we need to move towards eventually at least a part-time uh, coordinator of Parks and Rec. And I was wondering, and there was some question whether we could budget for that ever. It seemed like there was a little bit of pushback, but I was reading the current biennium budget, and it says in there upcoming projects for this next one we're in now includes hiring of a part-time parks and recreation coordinator, which excited me because it looks like it's in the budget. <laughs> so now obviously there must be some reason, I mean, that hasn't happened, but I guess that excited me that we perhaps could do that. Cause I, I do think I'm a huge fan of this adolescent outreach. I tried to do some of that. I think volunteers can effectively help but I think in the long run, we need at least a part-time coordinator to take the lead in a lot of these things because it's the staff person that is the key, the volunteers help. So, you know, I don't know, Bill, if you want to say anything on that, because I kind of reached out saying, what's that mean? It looks like the budget included a part-time parks and rec person for the current budget. That's what it looks to me like it says, but I guess, well, it's Bill, you can- Aspiration. Could, pardon? I think it's an aspiration. Well, I'm not. Like a goal. I'm it used to doing a lot. Of, to happen. I'm used to doing a lot of budgets, and I've never put in a budget something that's not in the budget. <laughs> I mean, it does say in our budget there's 1.2 FTEs under Parks and Rec. So that's why I reached out for clarification because it it does say it. 
but obviously I'm missing something. Is that our maintenance people? It's a yeah, combination. So, yeah, let me. Um, Because in my experience, I would never put in a budget a hope and a dream. I, I'm used to seeing in a budget, if it says you're going to hire a part-time person, and then there's 1.2, that means you were going to do that. Okay, so here's the biennial budget. And this is what is this, this is kind of the section that um, is a discussion. Um, Andy wrote the, the bullet points for this. Um, and for the budget, this is the Parks and Rec budget. Um, and, and what I will say is that these bullets are our goals for the budget. Um, they, the, 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 the part-time part employee, uh, you know, the skate park in Brain Hill, um, these were all goals to be done, but not necessarily uh, if, if possible, but they were not necessarily things that were dedicated to budget directives. Um, I mean, the, the thing to remember is that this budget was created as a second budget during the last biennium process, um, two year, almost two years ago. We went through the process of creating a budget, um, assuming that a local option levy to fund public safety, and Don was actually on the... Um, the, the work group for this. Um, the idea was to create a budget assuming that a local option levy for police for public safety would pass in May. This was April when we started the budget process. And, um, and so the budget that we created had all this funding for additional public safety. And then by that funding for public safety happening, it freed up funds that we couldn't put into parks before because public safety is such a percentage of what resources we currently have. That levy failed in May, in the May election of uh, 2023. And so we had a second contingent budget that we had put together if the levy failed. And what it ended up doing was because of the eight to 10% increase in the cost annually of public safety, the other thing I would draw your attention to is that we had to actually bring the F, the number of full-time equivalent em employees in the parks budget down from 2.0 to 1.2 because we because we had to we had to start with adequately funding in the general fund the increasing cost of maintaining the police services that we have and the result was we had to actually in the budget anyway pull back a little bit on the actual personnel we pay for in Parks and Rec. But we put a bullet point there that the goal would be to try to do this if there were some things happened over the course of two years that made it possible, okay? Um, revenues, property tax revenues have come in a bit higher than we, but then we conservatively budgeted. But the way the budget works the, what, the way the budget mechanism works is that Parks and Rec gets a very small amount of that because so much has to go to public safety and, uh, and kind of um, other things. Um, so it's, it's kind of one of those things where if, if we could, if we had the resources to do it, uh, trust me, I would, <laughs> I would love to pull the trigger on at least a half-time parks coordinator. But it, but this is a direct. This isn't a directive in the budget. It's a goal, um, kind of given adverse conditions that we started with back in, because of the failure of the public safety level. Now, having said that, um, the budget, the budgeting process for the net, for the next biennium is going to start, um, not terribly long after the new year, and we'll have a better idea of where final where revenues have come in in full at the end of the at the end of this biennium at the end of this fiscal year in biennium and we have a starting point for perhaps being uh, more you know progressive with staffing on on the parks and rec side uh, moving into this next biennium to plan and that's that's and so i'm hoping that this body kind of puts in some very specific parks and rec targeted you know budget priorities in the budget process 
that starts after the, you know, sometime after the beginning of the new year, if that makes sense. The other thing I would keep in mind is that one thing we had to pause back in May with, with Andy leaving was we had briefed city council on, I forget, I think it was like 110, 120, $130,000 in maintenance costs from new park maintenance we're taking on in, in Sunset Ridge, and then just some right of way and other um, maintenance and mowing that we haven't been parks maintenance and right of way mowing and maintenance that we that we didn't properly budget for. Um, we didn't have a park, we didn't really have a public works director actively engaged in the budgeting process almost two years ago. We do now. <clears throat> and so we all, we also have this maintenance burden that we have to try to pay for. And so it just makes it that much more difficult right now to add that staffing, no matter how much we would love to have it. So that's all to say that it's just a challenging thing to do immediately, but we would love, we would love to do it. So it's, but like I'd ask you, it says here, uh, 13,000 for fireworks. Is that already gone? Is that off the table? There is no money for fireworks. Could we take something like that? I mean, I realize we can't hire a staff person now, but if we could even stipend somebody for five or 6,000 to start some rec leagues or do some adolescent basketball, you know, we have something to kind of get a better foothold than all volunteers. I think that would maybe create the energy we need to eventually get a staff person. Um, but if you're, you're feeling like, you know, like I was looking at that number because it's a big one. There's almost 13,000 in the budget for fireworks. Some of those funds have already been attributed to other funds in there because we didn't do the fireworks. I, I don't have the numbers in front of me right now, but they, they've kind of already been redistributed already. We, we have, I will say that we have had some costs come in. Dustin's right. We have had some costs come in higher on certain events. And so we have used what we haven't spent on fireworks as a resource to help co cover overages on some other things because we just haven't had a 4th of July event in a while. Um, the, the bottom line here is that, that, that after you, after you, after it, you know, we budgeted for public safety and library and this, that, and the other. What was left over for park for doing parks and recreation? It's given the resources that we have. It's the smallest piece of the pie slice of how the general fund gets spent, and that's what we're dealing with with this budget right here. Um, so it's just it's it's not an easy it's not an easy thing to do. It's the bottom line. July? Uh, I had a chance to meet with Pumpkin Ridge about her own golf idea. This is a proposal that I'm sending over to them. And it took a little while to get a hold of them because they don't have a general manager right now, nor an assistant manager. So I was working with their accountant. But um, but she was very receptive of the idea and very receptive of the concept of being better neighbors with each other. And so this is what I'm sending, if something jumps out at you, let me know, but it should be going out to, uh, tonight. And she has to reach out to her bosses. I think they're in Texas about this concept. But, you know, I don't anticipate as being a, a big footprint on what they do, but I think it's a nice opportunity for them to, to reach out to us and us to be a part of their lives a little bit. Um, again, become better neighbors once again. So, uh, so I anticipate that to hopefully go well in the next next month and hopefully have something to report on the next week. This is on the public side you're talking about. Yeah, side. no, we don't get to go on the private side. No, no. This is the, the the public side off off season, off time, off day, tea times, underutilized inventory as we decided to call it together. And, and she's a fan of utilizing inventory and we're a fan of the, the discount. And so, you know, what that's going to look like. You know, I'm gunning for 50%. But, you know, golf is changing here in the west side. Quail Valley is becoming homes. Uh, Merriweather's about to go down, too. Yeah. Um, and so I think the golf landscape is changing a little bit. But I'd certainly like to be able to get in something going here with them. So we can do a handful of tea times each week. And Monday morning at 8 a.m. or something weird like that. But, yeah. You know, something to offer. 
you know, start to start to rebuild. So that's my my humble report. Love Thank it. Thanks, Thanks for Yeah, no, it's, it's a world class course. It's just a big deal. Well done. Perfect. Put that on the short term goals. That was wonderful. Where? The Silas. I don't have anything, but I would like to have an update on um from uh Don about the RAS meeting and how he's um presenting on our behalf of the parks for research. The what the RAS meeting. The Reba committee. Oh yeah, the I don't know, we're in a very, it's really a long ways away from saying anything at this point. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what's going to happen. It's kind of been slow getting going. That's a good point. Um, yeah, that would be an interesting, that could probably be a future agenda for this group. Yeah, I hadn't really thought about that. You mean? Uh, well, that's why you're there on behalf of the Parks Board. Right, I'm there as a citizen who's on the parks board, but the- No, you're there on behalf of the parks board, and that's how it's listed. You're representing the parks board. Is there, okay, is there a position I'm supposed to represent? I, I guess that's something that we need to decide what that needs to be, yeah. um, because I think that your question should be um, parks related. And the growth of our parts, not self-interest. Yeah, I, I, that's a good question. I doubt if there's a lot of us on there that represent things, and no, nobody's ever explained to us that we only comment. To be honest, I think it's bigger than that. You comment as a person, but you also have to advocate for mm -hmm. whatever you're from. So, mm -hmm. yeah, that that would be. It's a much broader conversation, though. Because I, because. My take on it was if you were going to be there just as an individual, you shouldn't be there representing the parks board. Yeah, I don't, don't know. I haven't really thought about it. Probably half the people on the committee are representing something. <laughs> what that means, I don't know. I haven't heard anybody talk that way so far where they say, on behalf of the chamber, here's what I feel on behalf of. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Like you said, you haven't really gone to a point where you can really say anything. So once you get a little bit more concrete, we can maybe. Well, I'm not sure what I'd say. I guess this group would probably have to talk more because it's really unclear. Um, you know, certainly I would advocate for ways to build up the parks we already have within. It's a whole different question. Well, we also need a bigger park. And so I would advocate mm -hmm. for a bigger park too. Yeah, I mean, one of the things I've been a big fan on and I would continue to advocate, I'm a huge fan of the lake area because to me, that's where I would put the big park. And so I've been a proponent of that from the start because to me, that's the, the best land for park. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, uh, but again, it's, we're a long ways from getting to that discussion. Yeah. And I, I certainly, if we want to put that on an agenda sometime, I could kind of tell you where I'm at on that. Mm -hmm. I've studied um, actually the park idea quite a bit that we perhaps would do by the old pumpkin patch. If the lake were brought in, I think that has a lot of potential. Lake yeah. View Farms. Giant park. Pardon? Lake View Farms. Yeah, Lake View Farms is just, it's the best land that's been, in my mind, that we've considered bringing in and it it could create a giant park, which is what we need. But that, you know, that's quite a ways down the line. But yeah, that's definitely. But it's good. part of the discussion, and it should be, in my opinion, it should be part of the discussion of why you want to not have zero growth. No, and I've never been that way. I. I've been pushing the lake from start to finish unsuccessfully, but yeah. But then it's it's a complicated discussion because somebody else would argue if we put in a semiconductor plant, we're going to get trails and parks, and that's a more complicated discussion. No, I mean you bring in more land, but so we want to add that to the agenda then. 
for our next meeting. We could, we could. I mean, it's, yeah. we're yeah. a ways away from Taylor being mature. Okay. Yes. I, if, if, if I might, um, we expressly put representatives of each of the bodies of the of the, the city on the UGB relook committee so that that individual would be the would be the messenger of the board, whatever the opinion. I mean, okay. um, so I think that that would be a very helpful thing to do to have that conversation. So Don has yeah. Don knows what you're thinking. Okay. Um, I guess the other thing I would say is that the the existing parks master plan that has been adopted does have future larger park larger parks mm -hmm. uh, in it and it's adopted and so I think for that reason as well I would take a look at that document okay sooner rather than later and let that be part of that conversation okay because one of the things that, you know Don is talking about is is you know the pond up um, off of Old Pumpkin Ridge Road. Um, we call them Lake. Lake, yeah. You know, uh, the family that owns the that property, you, it's big enough that the family <laughs> used to teach their their kids how to water ski on that thing. It's that it's big enough for that. Yeah. You know, yeah. um, but but the need for big city parks is in the existing parks master plan, and frankly, that's probably one of the last remaining big check marks. <laughs> In, in that thing. So I would start there and, and that, let that be part of your conversation about how you want to register your, you know, your views on the UGB committee. Okay. So we can do that and add Parks Master Plan to our next agenda as well. Okay. Great. Let's go through that. Okay. We'll see that. We won't go through it in one night. Well, that's okay. We, we should probably read the report coming in. Yeah. yeah take a peek at it. And then, page. Yeah. Yes. It's easily Googleable. Yeah. Okay. I think it's found pretty quick on your I research. found it okay. on the website. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. All right. Anything else? Ms. Burns? No, oh, I'm good. No? Mr. King? I have nothing. Ms. Parra? No, I am in agreement for not on the next agenda to finish up on the by on the bylaws sure. and definitely start the conversation. Maybe not get through the whole agenda next time on the um master plan, but definitely all of us. Yeah. Have that homework and bring back and have a starting. Maybe it's divided into the next year. I mean, I think we should take advantage of a lot of us are new here in this board and take advantage of what we've done this year, what's worked, what has not, and then be in the know of that master plan and kind of go from there as to what we really want to focus and move forward instead of staying stagnant mm -hmm. and move forward next year. Um, and really kind of put into action things. We may not be able to put into action a lot, a lot of things, but at least somewhat kind of move forward in little steps. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I would like to take November and December to, to really focus on, on what those goals and bring them from the master plan so that we're not kind of reinventing the wheel, but working with what we have mm -hmm. and what we can work with so okay. that we make that a priority for next year. Okay, perfect. Love it. Um, does our ex official chair have any news or updates to share with city council? Yeah, not that would concern this board, but uh, there will be a grand opening, and you might know when for the new public works building. It should be coming up when I don't know. <laughs> it, I mean, it, We're in discussions of it. But. Yeah, we don't date, date to be determined, but likely earlier December. Right. And I guess another thing is uh, taking more responsibility, maybe in like the Veterans Park celebration and Memorial Weekend and 11-11, uh, maybe taking a bigger responsibility. Because right now it's the chamber, basically. Yeah. And, and maybe put your two cents in how you want to do it, since it is a park. And it was pretty well represented. We had a couple members there this year. Nice, nice. So, okay. perfect. I do have one last thing. I'm sorry. No, but the please. foundation is looking to meet on Thursday. Is there anything besides updates on the kitchen and where that's going for that <laughs> newsletter to go out? Is there anything else you guys would like me to take to the meeting if we do meet on Thursday? 
besides getting updates on where Cindy's at with the uh, letter. Anything else? Thank you for representing. Mm -hmm. well, then on the agenda too, then I'll bring back. If we do meet, I'll bring back whatever comes out of that meeting on Thursday. Perfect. All right. We good? Anything else to add before we conclude? No? Hopefully Lori's feeling better. Um, I guess if there's nothing else, okay, our next meeting will be scheduled for December 9th at 6 p.m. This concludes our Parks and Recreation meeting at 827.